Welcome to Furniture Industry News, your daily source for updates, trends, and breakthroughs in the world of furniture. Whether you're a retailer, manufacturer, or designer, this podcast is crafted for individuals like you, industry professionals seeking the very latest information. We're here to deliver an insightful episode filled with topics that matter most to your business. So settle in, stay tuned, and let's explore the current state of the furniture industry together. The mattress sector has certainly felt a strain over the last year, with a notable decrease in both sales and units sold across the board, reflecting a trend of tightening consumer spending and increased economic pressures. Data from the International Sleep Products Association, referred to as ISPA, pinpointed a dip in the total sales volume, cascading from $10.56 billion to $9.84 billion, equating to a concerning 6.8% year-to-date drop from the previous year with a similar downtrend visible in unit sales. The stats tell a tale of a market undergoing contraction. Specifically, we're looking at mattress-only sales, which fell by 7.3% to $8.56 billion, down from $9.26 billion. This was shadowed by an 8.2% slip in units shipped, rounding out to $25.88 million from a previous $28.19 million while the sales of domestic-made mattresses reflected a 6.6% decrease. The international market experienced a sharper decline of 13.4%, underscoring that this is not just a local issue. It's a global challenge that industry insiders are grappling with. Looking closer to home, the fall in units sold of domestic mattresses came in at a 7.6% decrease, a significant figure that goes hand-in-hand with import numbers also facing a downturn. Confronted with these stark figures, one must ponder over the implications these financial stresses could have on businesses, employment, and innovation within the mattress industry. Could this serve as a catalyst for the sector to seek out new growth strategies? Or will we see this contraction continue before the market finds its footing? Whatever the outcome, the industry is at a pivotal juncture, and how it responds could reshuffle the hierarchy within the mattress market. Walmart, a company known for its retail dominance, is taking a significant leap in the realm of logistics and supply chain efficiency. It's a development that could change the game for retailers everywhere. The backbone of this strategic move lies in Walmart's artificial intelligence-powered route optimization technology, which has up till now been a cog in the well-oiled machine of Walmart's operations. But in an unprecedented shift, Walmart is transforming this in-house tech into a software as a service, offering it to businesses across the spectrum. Anshu Bardwaj, the Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Walmart Global Tech and Walmart Commerce Technologies, puts it succinctly. By embracing Walmart's advanced AI technology, businesses can bypass the steep hill of developing such complex systems from scratch. Instead, they can direct their focus toward what they do best serving their customers, stirring away from the huge investments in time and resources otherwise required. The root optimization software is no run-of-the-mill technology. It meticulously crafts driving routes, optimizes trailer space, and reduces the miles driven, resulting in impressive carbon footprint reductions. To put that into perspective, Walmart cites an avoidance of producing 94 million pounds of carbon dioxide an elimination of some 30 million miles that would have been driven unnecessarily. The AI considers an array of dynamic elements, including delivery windows, traffic patterns, and even weather, to ensure punctuality and efficiency are never compromised. This isn't Walmart's solitary foray into SAS solutions. It's second to store assist, which empowers local fulfillment for deliveries and pickups. Walmart's dual offerings are setting the stage for what could be a massive shakeup in the logistical capabilities of retailers big and small. As the curtains close on Wayfair's AI script, it's clear that this is more than a one-act play. It's a long-term strategy set to reshape retail logistics. As we peer into the financial landscape of big lots, a noteworthy narrative emerges with furniture standing firm as a pivotal revenue generator for the retail giant. Amid the release of Q4 results, Big Lots showcases the tenacity of the furniture sector, 
ringing up 23% of their volume, which translates to a substantial $329.4 million of the approximately $1.4 billion in sales for the quarter that ended on February 3rd. Furniture is not just another product line for big lots. It's the leading segment, taking the reins over areas such as food at 19% and soft home goods at 17%. Even though the company hasn't released a full annual report offering a year-on-year comparison for furniture sales, the current figures stride in consistent pace with the previous fiscal year's 23.4% and supersede fiscal 2021's already impressive 27.4%. In the grand scheme of things, furniture's solid performance, although slightly diminished from its zenith, remains robust especially when stacked against other quarters. While Big Lots experienced an overall 9% comp sales decline, furniture sales saw a gentler dip at just 4%. These numbers are quite revealing, particularly when contrasted with the 9% drop in soft home and much steeper declines across other major categories such as seasonal items and hard home goods. This resilience, however, doesn't completely shield Big Lots from broader market pressures. The reported net sales for the quarter dipped by 7.2% to $1.4 billion, with the full year drawing to a close at 13.6% below the preceding year's figures. President and CEO Bruce Thorne underlined key strategies that kept the company on course, despite these rough seas. Looking ahead, the performance of the furniture segment will undoubtedly remain under intense scrutiny. With interest rates impacting the housing market, immediate boosts from furniture sales may be curbed. Yet the long-term outlook is infused with a note of optimism as Big Lot's commitment to a well-priced, trendy furniture selection presents a promising avenue to weather the storm and emerge with new opportunities for growth. Drawing inspiration from the blend of elegance and practicality, renowned designer Tamara Day recently divulged her signature styling techniques set to spark creativity on retail floors within homes, and of course, on our TV screens. Tamara, who became a household name through her show Bargain Mansions on the Magnolia Network, elegantly marries furniture with accessories to conjure spaces that are as stunning as they are sellable. Her approach? It's a masterful layering of vivid colors and artwork, complemented by well-curated accessories and the freshness of blooming flowers. Such artistry propels ordinary rooms into realms of the extraordinary. It's all about crafting an ambiance that not only captivates the eye, but also stimulates sales, connecting each piece in a narrative that urges customers toward purchase. Upcoming at the High Point Market, you have the chance to glean insights from Tamara's own collection with Spectra Home, alongside other notable brands such as Roommates, Vera Luz, and Cayenne Designs. Scheduled for April 14th at 1 p.m. in the Spectra Home showroom, this event is more than a showcase. It's a blueprint for success ripe with design strategies that promise to uplift sales for retailers and designers alike. In a gesture that underpins hope and unity, Tamara invites all to behold the Chair of Hope, a piece swathed in the collective wishes of those who have touched its fabric. The chair will be raffled off, and profits will fortify the common thread for the Cure Foundation's outreach to those battling breast cancer within our community. This amalgamation of philanthropy, craftsmanship, and innovation stands as a testament to the transformative power of design. So, mark your calendars, for this shared experience intertwines the artistry of furniture with the heartbeat of compassion. In a significant turn of events for the furniture industry, there's been a new development regarding the Klausner Home Furnishings brand. Hilco Stream Bank has put forth an offer to acquire the brand assets of Klausner, stirring up considerable interest among industry insiders. For those who have closely followed Klausner's journey, this might come as a blend of surprise and nostalgia. Klausner, since its establishment in 1963, has solidified its presence as one of the largest privately owned furniture companies in the United States. Known for its value-driven products and swiftness in responding to market demands with innovative solutions, Klausner has built a robust network of wholesale partners. Highlighting some of the assets up for grabs, The sale incorporates Klausner's trademarks, the prestigious domain name that carries its legacy, the extensive product catalog that has been the cornerstone of its offerings, and the invaluable wholesale customer and vendor lists. The presence of such a storied company has had remarkable implications for the industry, with annual sales reportedly reaching over $200 million. This acquisition is not just about assets. 
It's an opportunity to wield the brand equity Klausner has meticulously crafted over decades. This opens up avenues for the prospective buyer to reconnect with an established and desirable network of distributors, including eminent furniture stores and e-commerce giants. It's worth noting the sale is steered by Focus Management Group USA, acting as the general receiver, and notably excludes assets related to the prestige fabricator's foam manufacturing business. Industry stakeholders and prospective buyers should mark their calendars as expressions of interest are due by March 28th. There is an unmistakable resonance within the industry when a brand of Klausner's stature opens up a chance for acquisition. It signifies not only a possible shift in ownership, but also presents a rare opportunity for the new proprietor to carry forward and potentially augment the legacy of such an iconic name in home furnishings. As we keep a close eye on how this acquisition unfolds, it's an understatement to say that the outcomes of this transaction could reflect far and wide, setting precedents for the future of furniture business dealings. Moving on to international territory, we've seen a remarkable event that's made waves across the furniture industry globally. The Export Furniture Exhibition, hosted in Kuala Lumpur, has been termed a resounding success, resonating with industry professionals far and wide. The event, which took place from March 4th to the 7th, was not only a bustling hub for commerce, but also a platform for creative expression. This year's showcase introduced the Malaysian Furniture Creativity Awards with the purpose of igniting innovation and sketching out a vibrant future for furniture design. Winners were selected across three distinct categories, dining, living, and bedroom. But the accolades weren't simply handed out. Instead, they resulted from an intriguing blend of public voting by buyers and the discerning scrutiny of a panel of judges, which included esteemed designers and figures from the media. For the dining category, HomeJS Furniture claimed the first prize, followed by the remarkable offerings from Deep Furniture and Novel Furniture. In the living category, the spotlight fell on Natural Signature, flanked by the commendable work of Dynamic Furniture Inns and THL Sofa. While over in the bedroom section... Novel furniture emerged triumphant with favorite design and Ho Long Wood hot on its heels. The show chairman, Chua Chun Chai, expressed a profound pride in the accomplishments of Malaysian furniture makers as they boldly stride toward distinctive designs that don't compromise on sustainability and comfort. It's clear that the Malaysian furniture industry aims not just to participate on the global stage, but to redefine it, striving to climb even higher than its current top 10 position in the world rankings. As the curtains fall on this successful event, all eyes look towards the future with anticipation building for the next edition of the exhibition, which is set to return to the Kuala Lumpur Convention Center from March 3rd to 6th, 2025. In today's bustling furniture market, an intriguing innovation is capturing the attention of consumers and retailers alike. The rise of 3D visualization tools, these state-of-the-art technologies are reshaping the way we shop for furniture, infusing the experience with interactive and immersive qualities that were once the realm of science fiction. A compelling study by 3D Cloud by Marksent has revealed a strong consumer appetite for these dynamic tools, with a striking 66% of those who missed out on 3D visualizers during their purchase journey expressing regret. The implication is undeniable. There exists a substantial opportunity for furniture retailers to engage customers on a deeper level through these novel visualization aids. Not only do these 3D experiences resonate well with shoppers, they also empower them, providing a newfound sense of control and understanding. More than three quarters of consumers echo this sentiment, reporting they felt significantly more informed when utilizing these sophisticated shopping aids. The engagement doesn't stop online. An impressive 60% of furniture enthusiasts are keen on extending this 3D experience to in-store environments, suggesting a bridge between the digital and physical realms that retailers can capitalize on to enhance the overall furniture buying journey. Carly Fink, president of Provoke Insights, asserts that shoppers are gravitating towards retailers who can offer exceptional 3D tools, setting a new standard for customer interaction. Beck Biesecker, CEO and co-founder of 3D Cloud by Marksent, observes that retailers who integrate these groundbreaking technologies are not just redefining the consumer experience, but are also positioning themselves at the forefront of the competitive landscape. 
As we immerse ourselves in the realm of virtual configurations and lifelike simulations, it is clear that 3D visualization tools are no longer an optional luxury, but a vital feature that enriches the customer journey, turning what once was a simple transaction into a unique and insightful experience. Wayfair, the e-commerce giant widely known for its expansive home goods offerings, is venturing into the world of brick and mortar retail. With the recent rollout of its small format specialty stores in Florida under the Birch Lane banner, Wayfair is strategically using these spaces as platforms for experimentation and learning. These stores, which encompass classic furnishings and decor, are not just sale points but essentially labs for the company to understand better the vital components of physical retail. Kate Gulliver, Wayfair's chief financial officer and chief administrative officer, shared valuable insights during investor conferences, indicating that these small format stores help the company grasp key elements such as technology integration, staff training, merchandising, and managing product mix. With footprints significantly smaller than a traditional department store, these locations offer a safe space to test and learn, a necessary step before the launch of Wayfair's forthcoming flagship in Chicago. As Wayfair prepares to unveil its new 150,000-square-foot store, these Birch Lane locations highlight their free two-day delivery on items and offer an array of customer-centric services. Gulliver emphasizes the importance of these small-format stores for understanding diverse aspects of retail operations on a manageable scale, a considerate approach given the size and investment of the upcoming flagship store. The move into physical stores aligns with Wayfair's recognition of a considerable portion of the consumer base that still engages with offline retail. While 25% of home furnishing sales happen online, Wayfair is eyeing the larger share of the market that prefers an in-person shopping experience. Using its established logistics infrastructure developed over two decades, Wayfair aims to blend its online prowess with a tangible in-store presence, meeting its customers wherever they are most comfortable shopping. This foray into physical retail by Wayfair is a calculated endeavor to expand its customer reach and elevate the home shopping experience. With each small store functioning as a stepping stone, Wayfair is setting the pace for future expansion, shaping a more integrated and customer-centric retail strategy. As we await the grand opening in May, how Wayfair's physical presence complements its online platform remains a focal point of interest for the furniture industry. Beyond's ambitious mission to encompass every aspect of home life has been set in motion through a series of strategic initiatives tailored to enhance their comprehensive home company experience. Chairman Marcus Limonis and CEO Chandra Holt recently unveiled their vision for expanding Beyond's reach to the four corners of the property, four walls of a home, promising an era of growth and holistic customer engagement. As the duo took the stage at the Inspired Home Show, they shared insights into Beyond's transformation into a multifaceted entity, one poised to serve loyal customers and the next generation of consumers. The strategy, as Limonis laid out, revolves around creating an array of brands that cater to the entire spectrum of home needs, from luxury products to value-driven offerings. The goal is not only to meet customer expectations, but to surpass them. Under Holt's direction, Beyond is revamping its approach to category management, ensuring the product mix is finely curated and aligns with what consumers seek, quality, variety, and a tailored shopping experience. This includes a rejuvenated overstock platform focusing on over-the-top deals, reflecting a commitment to competitive pricing without sacrificing quality. Furthermore, acquisitions such as that of Zulili highlight Beyond's determination to strengthen its e-commerce capabilities. Additional plans include the launch of Backyard.com, a gateway to outdoor living that is expected to enrich the home experience even further. Lemonis's vision extends beyond traditional business approaches. He underscored the importance of a diversely composed leadership team, reflective of Beyond's consumer base, emphasizing the impact of having a team that thinks like and therefore can better serve its consumers. This is underscored by a future-forward mindset that values vendor relationships as paramount to success. Moreover, content creation and education will play significant roles in Beyond's blueprint for growth. The establishment of a vendor and trade educational platform demonstrates the company's drive to add value to business owners and customers alike through knowledge and resources. 
As we look toward the horizon, Beyond's commitment to being a Four Corners, Four Walls company heralds a new chapter in home retail, one that promises enhanced customer experiences, thoughtful product selections, and a renewed dedication to serving as the trusted go-to resource for everything home. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Furniture Industry News from FurniturePodcast.com. We've covered a breadth of topics today, from the stark reality of dwindling mattress sales to the innovative technologies that are shaping the future of furniture retail. Your support is what drives our commitment to keeping you at the forefront of industry news and insights. We appreciate you joining us and would love to hear your thoughts on the developments we discussed. Your feedback helps us create content that's most valuable to you as we strive to maintain the professional and conversational tone that resonates with our industry professionals. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you're interested in for future episodes. Until next time, keep leading the charge in the dynamic world of furniture, and we'll be back soon with more insights to fuel your success. Goodbye for now.